hi. Um, this is just a short video um, in the context of the sudden move to online teaching uh, in the context of the COVID-19 epidemic. And this is specifically for teaching staff um, and trying to think through the question of what it means to respond to students' anxieties about the changing conditions, both of teaching and of social life. Um, so um, what I want to do is to identify um, some of the, the, the key problems um, and to, to try and just offer some uh, directions for what we might do in terms of um, enhancing our response to students. Um, okay, firstly, um, what is the problem? Um, there's, there's three different things we can, we can identify. The one is in the context of the emerging epidemic, uh, people are living in fear of their health, their, health, their own health, the health of their loved ones. And, um, and that creates a, 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 a whole lot of kind of psychological knock-on effects um, and uh, multiple forms of um, anxiety and other feelings. Um, so one of the things that uh, really comes out at this time is the feeling of uncertainty. The fact that this has happened very fast, that the responses have been very, very um, chaotic and disorganized and things have happened very suddenly. So for a lot of students, the feeling of uncertainty is, 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 is the main trigger for anxiety. Um, and it's important to identify that. It's not just the health um, question, it's the actual feeling of, of things changing too fast. Um, and linking to, link to the, the sense of uncertainty um, and that, that overall feeling of chaos is specifically the, the, the third big issue which, which we need to look at, which is a feeling of helplessness. Um, firstly, a feeling with, of helplessness within kind of health vulnerability, but really also a feeling of helplessness within a kind of loss of control. Like a, a particular year had been imagined, um, um, various um, decisions had been put in place, various practices were up and running, and suddenly they all changed and people don't know what to do. So this combination, so the context of the health fear really producing this uncertainty and helplessness emotionally is, is some of how we need to understand students responding in this context. Um, and students have specifically voiced concerns about um, not being, not fully understanding the changes, the changes in deadlines, how to manage their time under the new conditions, um, how to manage the, the new forms of communication, um, and have expressed concerns firstly about um, uh, the anxiety of these changes, but then also about the psychological consequences of social isolation. Um, so if we are identifying those problems, what might we do? Well, the first thing is in the face of uncertainty, we need to provide a kind of order. Um, and this is one of the, the immediate and effective things we can do. We need to start to be providing very consistent frameworks and expectations for the students. Um, and it's okay for us to really labor and reiterate these, to be very clear exactly how have the teaching forms changed from one to another, um, exactly um, what the students have to do, how the schedules have changed, any changes in assessments, any changes in dates and times, and to be very, very clear with those and to reiterate those new subject learning guides with highlighted changes, um, in, new information on LMS and uh, sending messages to the students, um, reassuring them. And, and even though we ourselves are in a state of uncertainty, trying to provide just that framework of order um, is very helpful in, in moderating anxiety. Um, the other thing that is really crucial in moderating anxiety is being available. Um, because students are kind of feeling thrown out onto their own. And this is a huge issue. And um, that's that the ability to just talk to the lecturer after the class or to drop in for consultation times, that's gone. And so in this sort of chaotic, anxious floundering, there doesn't seem to be a lifeline. So we have to think through how we become available. And there's two sides to it. The, the first is making sure we are available, but the second is making sure we manage that availability from, from our side for our sake. Um, and to think through this, the way in which, um, for instance, often the, the shift to email has been very frustrating because we get inundated with kind of trivial email questions um, that have already been answered in class. Um, 
and things like that. And that can be that that it become a kind of a, a, a an overwhelming, irritating burden that interrupts our core activities. So we want to balance becoming available with um, um, with structuring what 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 we can provide. Um, my suggestion is um, firstly noting we will be getting a lot of more email traffic in this direction. Uh, and to think about firstly time structuring that and not to reply to email on demand. That to be very clear that we, that we, there's a certain time we allocate to replying to student emails, that perhaps we do it once or twice a day, that we say at nine in the morning and three in the afternoon, I will reply to that day's emails. Um, so that it becomes containable and manageable and is not a constant interruption. The other thing is that prevents students getting into email kind of messaging chats where you reply and they reply back expecting a second reply and that kind of escalates into a weird kind of um, chat environment and um, not to do that. So the, the structuring, the timing, the other thing is to be available for consultations, to simply move the consult consultations online and to set up uh, Zoom meeting times uh, for consultations um, or call-in times. Um, and to, to be very clear about the availability of those and perhaps to, um, to link those to, to other course tasks. Um, and simply setting up a Zoom meeting um, during consultation times and give, giving the link to the students that, that you are sitting there waiting for um, any interactions that may happen then. That's, that's a really effective way of managing that. Um, the other thing, of course, is to unload um, some of the question and answer stuff from email um, onto firstly the Q&A forums uh, and to actively encourage the students to participate in the Q&A forums on LMS to make sure those are active because in many courses um, students don't use them. And when they send you questions, refer them back and say, rather put that question on the forum. Firstly, that means that the class can crowdsource the answer if it's something obvious. Um, secondly, it means that um, uh, that that um, you can reply to the question to the entire class so other people don't have to repeat the question. The other way of unloading it is to unload it to the lecture or tutorials um, and streaming or, or recording and to say ask that in the tutorial and then answer it in the tutorial. The same benefits that it takes your response time out of your, your other work time and it integrates it because uh, into general feedback, so that you're not getting multiple re requests um, from the same students. Okay, so that just in terms of uh, the, the two principles so far, the one of really making sure we're offering the students a clear, well-guided structure that we change as little as possible and we make as, as um, uh, stable and comprehensible to the students as possible. Secondly, being available, but structuring that availability appropriately. The third thing is the question of, should we be talking about COVID-19? Um, uh, is that a way of managing the, the context or does that make it worse? And, and there are two views on this. The one view is students are really overwhelmed. They don't want to hear more about it. They're just freaking out and don't, don't, don't bring it up. But there's another view which is that it is useful to talk about it, but it's essential to talk about it in a certain way. And this is, from previous epidemics, this is kind of well known uh, in, the, in, in kind of public health domains. What goes wrong is that as um, there's a move to try and make people respond appropriately to the emerging risks, that the emphasis is, on, is, is put on the risk and the danger. And this creates a unmanageable feeling of anxiety. And one of the things we know is that people respond well to moderate anxiety and extremely badly to high levels of anxiety. And what we, the risk is that people's state of anxiety is, is getting too high. And so instead of that triggering more effective responses, it triggers a kind of a meltdown and uh, anything from, from just sort of emotional breakdown to just going into denial, believing conspiracy theories that trivialize the threat. So the thing is, if one is going to talk about COVID-19, and personally, I think that, that there, there is a time and a place for that. One must talk about in a way that doesn't create unmanageable anxiety um, and doesn't play into the underlying sense of helplessness. Um, and the way we do that is by emphasizing the solutions to, to articulate the seriousness of the problem, 
by showing the solutions to the problem, showing that because it's a primarily contact-based virus rather than an airborne virus, it's quite easy to manage um, contact in that way. Um, it doesn't require the, the radical kinds of social isolation that a primarily airborne virus does. It's easy to, um, to you know, the hand washing, the, 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 social, the physical distancing, we're calling it now, rather than social distancing. Um, so to, 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 to engage with the fact that A, there is a need to change behaviors, and B, there is something of a risk, but to engage from it from the point of view of the solutions and from the point of view of the science. Um, um, because one of the other problems is the, the fake news that is circulating. Um, so that's the thing, if, if to, to, to um, engage with the, the need for change social behaviors, but from a, a, a positive uh, solution-based uh, perspective that, that, that helps manage the sense of helplessness and in fact empowers the students to feel that there are positive self-protective strategies. Okay, going on from there, um, the just dealing with sort of student emotional crises. Um, and, you know, once again, there's two poles here. One, the one saying, well, that's not our work. Our work is to, to teach academically. And the other saying, no, in fact, good conditions of teaching and learning do involve a certain amount of psychosocial support. And, and getting that balance right, getting the balance right of, 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 of being human and creating um, kind of supportive conditions for, um, for students. Um, and there, once again, that, that goes back to the availability, the availability for Zoom uh, um, meetings in consultation times, um, the um, being, being flexible uh, when students are going through difficulties in terms of, of assignments and assessments. Um, and also then um, uh, when the students obviously need further support, being sure um, to make that support available to them. So the, um, our key support at the moment is the health and well-being website on the Latrobe page. And when you go to the health and well-being website, follow that link, there's immediately a COVID-19 um, uh, feature there, which, which, which everyone can look at. And also there's the link to counseling and mental health. And students can um, email counseling at latrobe.edu.au or they can phone extension 2956. I was hoping uh, at the end of this video, I would give you the new um, uh, uh, policies that are, that are currently being developed by counseling and mental health. Unfortunately, they weren't out and I didn't want to delay this video because they are in the process, I understand, of, of um, working out how to become available. Um, and I presume they're also going to be going over to distance models and Zoom availability and things like that. But I honestly don't know. So watch this space, but do use that. Um, okay, so to recap, um, anxiety around, uh, around chaos, around helplessness, we um, provide support by providing kind of a real clarity and order and consistency um, in the course expectations. We try to be available, but we manage those av that availability. We try and be supportive, but we also, in cases of serious support needs, refer to counseling and mental health. And we make sure we make it clear what is available there and how students can access it.